Hello, my name's Michael Keneally, and this is a video about utterance and a particular place where the energy of utterance is held in Vedic astrology, the astrology of India. So this video is about Vedic astrology, but it's wider than that because it's about utterance and alphabets and gods of utterance, prophecy and alphabets. In fact, Vedic astrology comes from northern India where the Indo-European peoples migrated and invaded and they also migrated and invaded over almost all of Europe. And this is proved by linguistic evidence because Sanskrit, the language of the Vedas is so like Irish Gaelic and because creation myths of the Vedas are so like those of the Norse. And the reason I'm saying this is that the Indo-European peoples were very powerful on prophecy. Now in Vedic astrology the fourth quarter of Chitra Nakshatra or Chitra Lunar Sign is deemed to be ruled over by Chitra Gupta and Chitra Gupta held the Book of Life and so they believe that when you died the book where your deeds had been written down was read and that determined where you would go to before you reincarnated and so here we are picking up books and recording. But the ancient Norse had what they call volvers, women who mounted a high chair and went into severe or seething trance and they would answer questions with prophetic answers and after each answer they'd say to you and would you know more and what? So you had to take it pretty seriously. Now the Greek equivalent is the oracle at Delphi and there priestesses called Pythonesses used to mount a tripod over a cleft in the rock whence rises volcanic fumes. They would go into trance and prophecy. Now when the Indo-European Hellenes, tall and fair, invaded, they conquered the small dark-haired people in the area and they said, okay, this sanctuary is now ruled over by Apollo but of course the prophecy continued and in the times of the much later Roman Empire if you were a powerful person with a powerful question you would go to Delphi for an answer and indeed it was the Delphic oracle that gave Oedipus the utterance of his terrible destiny and in Rome there were the Sibyls now this is linked, writing and prophetic utterance, they're all part of communication. And in fact, for the Norse, the warrior magician god Odin hung upside down in the world tree Drassel for nine days, trancing, seeing the letters of the rune alphabet in the twigs and branches where each of the runes corresponds to a state of consciousness to a facet of life and the healing and empowerment thereof and on the ninth day he fell screaming from the tree and he possessed the runes and for the ancient Irish there was Ogma the warrior god who invented the Ogham alphabet and in the case of the Ogham alphabet each letter corresponds to the immeasurably different energy of a tree. There are other correspondence systems as well, but the tree correspondence is the chief one. Think of the difference between oak, enduring and lasting, holly, prickling and defensive, for example. And so I'm mentioning this as a ancient quality within the Indo-European peoples and that specifically it seems to be an energy that's particularly in the fourth parda of Chitra Lunar Sign. And remember the Vedic sages were so acute they could actually detect and utter the, the energy in each of the 360 degrees 
you know, because of the stars in that degree. And they said that Chitra Pada 4 has an energy of prophecy, the book of life. And I have found that people doing my Ogham or my Runes course, or indeed my Nakshatras course in Vedic Astrology, if they have certain planets in Chitra Pada 4, can be so good at utterance, so good at intuitive declaration, so good at healing through use of alphabets or utterance. I, I myself have Mercury in Chitra Pada 4, which of course is about utterance, but my Mercury is conjunct Ketu, the south node of the moon, you know, which makes it de sort of deeply intuitive and you know, quite difficult for many ordinary things. And it's Lord of my 12th house, and one of the affairs of the 12th house is the beyond and the intuitive. And I've definitely found over 22 years of teaching that if you have Rahu or Mercury there in particular, but also other planets, this points out that one of the skills you are born to perfect and deliver in this life is things like utterance, creative writing, use of those for healing and the transmission of beauty. So, you know, have a look at my courses and see if this gift I'm offering speaks to you, either from the point of view of learning the runes, the ogham, the nakshatras, Vedic astrology or Western astrology. And by the way, the mountain in the background is Ben Bulban Mountain, which is near the healing centre I run with Maggie in the west of Ireland. And just below it, to our left, W.B. Yeats, the great Irish poet, is buried. And he saw this land as a sacred place of energies, which can be felt particularly sacred to the energies of the Tuadanan and the Shi who came to Ireland, as, indeed as part of those ongoing Indo-European migrations. And so working with Lady Gregory, through her books and his poems, they affected the Celtic revival. Thank you.